channelcv.com has more information for you. And on youtube.com forward slash channels web, you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channel CV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, tap and swipe to reveal the menu and please follow the instructions. Now we have some pictures that were sent in to us. Let's start off with this one coming in from Lagos and it shows the state of Ishawa Road in Ikurudu area. The eyewitness reporter believes the prevalent authorities or the relevant authorities need to urgently look into the drainage system in the area to avoid a disaster when it rains. In the next picture, we see the aftermath of heavy rain accompanied by strong winds resulting in the uprooting of a tree along Kingsway Road in Ikoyi, also called the Alfred Rwani Road in Lagos State. The eyewitness wants the Environment Protection Agency in the state to provide some sort of barriers on the roads lined with trees to reduce the impact of such disasters. Still in Lagos, we have this picture showing the level of congestion typical of the Apapa Oshudi Expressway. He says this problem has persisted for so long and expects the incoming state government to finally bring it to an end. For all your pictures, thanks a lot. Do send us some more. Um, back to the courts now. The trial of another 22-year-old Togolese cook, Sunday Anani, who allegedly killed the chief executive officer of Credit Switch Limited, Mr. Okbayamig Bademosi, also resumed today at the Lagos High Court in Nibushiri. The Lagos State Director of Public Prosecution, Mrs. Titilayo Shitabe, called the wife of the deceased, Mrs. Ebuola Bademosi, as first witness in the trial of the cook. Mrs. Bademosi narrated how her husband was killed by the cook three days after he was employed. The witness said on the day of the murder, she had gone to a bank at Falomo to make some transfers, and by the time she returned to the house, she saw blood flowing from her husband's room. Now, she also told the court that before she left for the bank, her late husband had angrily called her to ask why the defendant was knocking on the door to his room. She also told the court that the suspect had escaped under the guise that he was sent on an errand by the deceased. The suspect was subsequently arrested in Nundo State by the police. Now, he's facing a two-count charge of murder and armed robbery brought against him by the Lagos State government. Pretty sad one there, indeed. Now, we've been keeping an eye on the CBN and its policies today. Now, let's look at the MPC's considerations and conclusions as it affects us all. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the Chief Executive Officer of Financial Derivatives Company, Mr. Biswa Kurowani. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news okay, at 10. Enjoy. So, it's the season of talking to economists yeah. like yourself. Yes, we know MPC, but talk to us first about that first quarter performance that we saw there, you know, the, the whole increase and talking about the fact that since 2015, we haven't seen it. What do you think? Um, basically, what has happened is that we had a GDP slowdown from 2.38 to 2.01 in the first quarter. Usually, the first quarter is seasonally low, <clears throat> but it, the truth is that compared to the previous quarter, there was a slowdown. But compared to previous first quarters, this was the strongest first quarter in the last four years. Mm -hmm. However, if you break down these results, you find that the sectors that grew fastest were transport, electricity, agriculture, but most importantly, real estate. Real estate, this is the first time real estate has grown in three years. Mm -hmm. And once real estate starts growing, it means that technically speaking, from this quarter, we are out of the recession. Now, but what is important also is that the sectors that grew, that actually lost manufacturing, ICT and trade are the sectors that are interest rate sensitive and the sectors that employ a lot of people. Manufacturing employs 6.98, wholesale and retail trade employs about 14%. So there's concern mm -hmm. that you will be having growth, but of course, non-inclusive growth. Is that what some people <clears> say, <throat> you have growth but not development? For instance, they're just seeing numbers, but they're not actually seeing development in their lives, etc. Well, the reality is that, true, I've watched a few programs and I've seen a lot of uh, what we call, there are a lot of roadside economists and uh, basically who are giving us, who are paid to come and uh, propagate facts which are not really facts. So, and roadside economists are 
functional herbalist. And while herbalists believe in magical outcomes, the economists believe in logical outcomes. Mm. So the truth is the truth. This is a period where a lot of people are trying to keep their jobs or a lot of people are trying to get jobs. Mm. So bribe taking and job seeking is the you know the having said that yeah, sorry. having said that, the truth is that the economy is slowly recovering, mm -hmm. but it is still suboptimal, <clears throat> it is still underperforming, and it needs a boost. Without the boost, you are not going to get anywhere. Mm. And that's the reality. I, what I was trying to say <clears throat> before, sorry, cutting you off there, you talked about status quo economics, the, yeah. economics, the last time we talked about this MPC. Absolutely, yeah. And you have it again. Yes. So is this fine the way it is? Well, I wouldn't say it's fine. I, I, I would say that the reality is that there was a cut last time of 50 basis points at the end of March. The GDP numbers you have today are actually GDP for first quarter. So that was, this cut took place only seven or eight days before the end of the first quarter. <clears throat> so it's unfair to judge that performance uh, at this time. But when you look forward, you have to ask yourself, what's the impact of what has happened? The impact of what has happened on different sectors. <clears throat> on the economy, it's, you know, uh, I would say fairly okay. Mm -hmm. On corporates, there's not going to be credit. Um, the higher borrowing rates, CBN intervention is going to continue to, to increase, and it's not going to, but on the consumer, mm -hmm. which is what the, the, the viewers out there exactly. want to know, what is the impact on me? On me as a consumer, there are seven commodities that we looked at. These seven commodities, Tomatoes has increased in the last month by 53%. It's mm -hmm. gone from 6,000 to 13,000 naira. Rice has gone from 14,000 naira to 17,000. Do not believe all those stories about all, all you know, mm -hmm. these things. Indomie has gone up by 15% from 2,000 to 2,300. Pepper has gone up from 6,000 to 7,000. Mm -hmm. The new yam has gone up from 800 to 900. The Gary stayed flat. That's the only item that stayed flat at 6,250. And Semovita went up from 2850 to 3000. So, what's the outlook? What has happened today at the MPC is not going to change anything, right? It's just wait and see. And again, you know, same old, same old. No. Uh, the outlook is that GDP in Q2 is going to be flat at about 1.9 to 2%. It's not going to increase as is expected. Mm -hmm. Inflation pressures will persist because there's minimum wage, because you've increased the salaries you've securitized contractor debt, and you have some other pressures. The Naira will be flat at about 362, 363. Unemployment numbers are coming out June 25th, and it's going to go up to 25% from 23.1. And there'll be supplementary budget and likely adjustments. The truth is that the, the future looks slightly better, but there's work to be done. Indeed, no that, easy options. At that point, we're going to have to leave it. Thank you so much, um, CEO, Financial Derivatives Company. Always a pleasure to have you, Mr. Rwani, on you. the news at 10 tonight. Now, let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's my colleague, Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hello, Ejama. Hello, everyone. President Muhammad Buhari is back in the nation's capital, Abuja, after spending five days in Saudi Arabia, where he performed the lesser Hajj. His official aircraft touched down at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja this evening and it was received by service chiefs and other top government officials. The president's visit to Saudi Arabia was on the invitation of King Salman bin Abdulaziz and he was accompanied by his wife. According to a statement from the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Garbo Shehu, the president met with the Nigerian community in Saudi Arabia where he said efforts should be intensified to expose those involved in drug trafficking and illegal trade in the country. The statement adds that the president asked Nigerians in the diaspora to always provide information that will help the government to curb the menace of drug trafficking. He also asked them to refrain from breaching the laws of Nigeria and other countries. In his words, every country has its own unpatriotic citizens. In China and Saudi Arabia, the laws are stringent on these things. Our citizens must obey our laws. They must respect the laws of other jurisdictions and if they don't, then they should blame themselves, not the harsh laws that they meet. End of quote. President Buhari is expected to preside over the valedictory session of the Federal Executive Council tomorrow, Wednesday, May the 22nd. Meanwhile, the Vice President Professor Emil Shibajo believes that rebuilding the Northeast is an all-important project 
that the federal government is prioritizing. Professor Shibajo mentioned this in Maiduguri, the Borno State capital, where he inaugurated capital projects carried out by the outgoing administration. He explained that the creation of the Northeast Development Commission will strengthen the post-conflict recovery in that part of the country. Township roads, housing estates, business hubs are among projects initiated by Governor Kashin Shetima's government and inaugurated by the Vice President. The insurgents have destroyed over 5,000 classrooms, 600 municipal buildings, 150,000 houses across the state. The concerns of uh, rebuilding of the Northeast remain uh, possibly the most important challenge that we have as a government. Uh, and I want to assure you that that remains at, on the front burner for the federal government. Uh, recently, the president signed into law the uh, Northeast Development Commission Act. So we now have a law which backs uh, the vehicle for the redevelopment and the rehabilitation of the Northeast. And I think that um, with the kind of commitment of those who have been appointed you know, to run the affairs of the NEDC, we are bound to see a great deal of improvement in the pace of rehabilitation and in the pace of reconstruction of, of the Northeast, and in particular, Bono, which of course is the worst hit by most of the most of the insurgency. Your evidence can remain uh, uh, addressed, that we will do our very best and will continue to support you in whatever way that is necessary and the good people of this state will continue to give all of our support and all of our and all of our help.